Talks. We are back on Pals TV with uh, one of our um, really long-running series uh, with our, our friend from Together We Grow, and Sarah has our friends from Heath out there at their facility, and we're learning about some really cool stuff, and today is really exciting. I was just in the uh, the production meeting before, and Sarah was telling me a little bit about it, and she's got it up there. Um, today we're learning a, a new way of gardening, so I'm really excited to uh, hear about that. So, can you hear us okay, Sarah? February 17th, I'm out, and I've got one. Sarah, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, now we can hear you now. Awesome. All right, are we ready to go? Yep, we're right, excited perfect. to learn about this. It's my birthday, so that's for cool. We are so excited. This is one of our favorite days of the week when we get to uh, meet up with you guys, and especially we have some um, participants here with the Here We Grow Garden. And if you haven't noticed, we are, because you've seen all the locations by now, we are at the High Tunnel Greenhouse, um, and we have a new, today we're going to talk about our new, what is it, growing element. Or, yes, it's not a toy, it's an education. It's not system. a toy, you guys, but it's, but it is very well designed. Um, it's an ed, it's an educational system. Um, it is not hydroponics like I originally thought. This is all new to me. It is aquaponics. And Dan, what is the difference? Aquaponics, you got fish into the uh, equation. If you come over here and don't scare them, you can see the goldfish in the fish tank there. Might have a hard time. We just started to stick them up on Saturday, so the water's still a little murky. But you might be able to get a couple of them goldfish in there. I don't know for sure. The difference is the goldfish provide the fertilizer for the plants versus hydroponics they inject different chemicals to make sure that they're getting the correct amount of stuff to grow hydroponics only supplies 18 percent of the essential nutrients that the plant needs to grow the aquaponics because the fish supply the 32 percent they need believe it or not a fish is its own ecosystem you take a fish and put it in the pond the slime on the back of it will develop the whole ecosystem of that pond, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Wow. Which is amazing. So, <laughs> let's go over briefly how it works. This is the fill tank, fish tank, which are 75 gallons of water in there, approximately 200 goldfish right now. Oh, wow. It would be like a big aquarium at your house, okay? Now, if you know when you first start up an aquarium at your house, it takes a while to get the back. All right, I think we're back. Where did we leave? I think we just have some a uh, little bit of internet issues out there on site, uh, but 
as they were saying, aquaponics is different than hydroponics. And I actually thought that we were learning about the hydroponics. Um, but uh, this is more interesting because you have the fish are, are kind of giving the, the fertilizer. So really cool stuff. Um, I think Kim is uh, getting on to save the day for us. Let's see if we can hear her. Hey, Kim. I, I don't know. Can you see me on your end? We can. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Sarah, but I know I got my disguise on. Um. Oh. <laughs> Where did we leave off? Where did we leave um, off? We were uh, just just hearing about the kind of the the ecosystem that a fish creates. All right, gotcha. All right, we're gonna we're back and we'll try this. We'll go back from the beginning. No, the ecosystem part. Oh, okay. The fish, the slime on the back of the fish has got an entire ecosystem on it. If you introduce that fish into a pond, it'll start building everything it needs to do to create its own surroundings, which is why we use fish in the fish tank here to supply the nutrients to the plants up here. The water's getting pumped up getting recirculated. There's a pump down at the bottom of this tube that's pumping the water up into here. You can see it coming out. Yeah. You want to guess how many days this lettuce has been growing? Anybody here want to guess how long this lettuce has been growing? A week. No, we started it Saturday afternoon. Saturday oh. afternoon. In the grow bed it'll start germinating within 40 hours, believe it or not. Wow, they got it down to 40 hours. Yep, just pea gravel. And I know I was talking to big, Mike. We got big pea gravel down yeah. at the bottom, and we got smaller pea gravel on top. Yeah. And the water comes into the grow bed, and if Sarah can get this, Sarah catch a little fisherman down there. Right now, the water level's up to about right here. Okay. So, <clears throat> so once the water level comes up a little bit higher, this little fisherman's going to go down, and the water's going to evacuate out of the grow bed, go back down to the fish tank, and get recycled again. Come on. <laughs> what that is doing is recycling all the nutrients that are coming off the plants and coming off the pea gravel, and going back down in the fish tank to supply them with nutrients. And when they do, those nutrients are coming back up to supply the, it's called the grow bag. So this thing at the back, you want me to evacuate this real quick to show you what's going Yes, let's see what, how. You see that little uh, pot bottle down there at the bottom? The pot bottle, yeah. When that gets full enough, it's going to pull my little fisherman down. It's going to dump the water out of the grow bed down in the fish bag. And then it's going to recirculate back up again. So it's a constant process of water getting nutrients from the fish, fish getting nutrients from the plants. Mm -hmm. And it's just the ecosystem that keeps going on. So, what kind of nutrients, how do those nutrients get from the plants and into the water? Out of the roots. Yeah, so there's nutrients in the roots that get washed out. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. why that's one good thing about an aquaponic system. If I want to replant this tomato, since there's no dirt on the root, I'm not gonna pull it out and pull the root off of it. I'm gonna be able to take it from here <gasps> and replant it to here, and it's not gonna be stressed out. Neat. Okay. Did you hear that at home? So you can just pick up. What about with the lettuce? Well, that's too that's delicate small. now. That's too small. Yeah, that's still small. We got to start thinning. But way. say you want to move this, you can just pick it up. You don't need to use a trowel or anything. No, because it's not stressed because it doesn't have. Now some of this, there's still some dirt down in the pea gravel. Mm -hmm. That's why the fish tank water is not real clear. That's why I said. When you balance an aquarium at home, when you first start it up, the water yeah. gets cloudy until all the bacteria levels 
form out the way they're supposed to, then the water clears up. The same thing will happen here. Yeah. We built this system on Saturday. A gentleman from the company came up. He's very well versed. He's over to Africa building these systems. These systems in underdeveloped countries gives them easy access to vegetables where they don't have good soil. Okay. They'll take an in, they'll take an enclosure like we got in the greenhouse, and they'll have these things lined up all the way around. Nice. One fish tank will supply up to three or four grow beds. You just reroute the different plumbing that's going around and you don't need to use as much water, especially in underdeveloped countries that don't have a good supply of water. Now, is this healthier to grow in? It's healthier to grow in than hydroponics is because the plants are getting all the nutrients that they need. Okay. And that one tank could support several of these yes. platforms? Yes, yes. That one fish tank can support several of these platforms. So are we planning on getting any more of these? I don't know that. Yes, I do. Seriously. One of the elementary schools is going to build a high tunnel and they want us to set the whole thing up in the aquaponics. <gasps> I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. And people are going, well, during the winter time, how are you going to keep the fish warm out in this environment? Because mm -hmm. even though we close the sides on the high tunnel, it still goes down between 20 and 30 degrees in here during the winter. Yeah. Now fish, goldfish need to be between 60 and 70. Tilapia is another popular one who needs to be 70 to 80 degrees. We'll probably end up going with bluegills, which need 40 to 50 degrees to survive the winter. Mm -hmm. However, the AP science class from the local high school is gonna come over and outside here, right outside the high tunnel, they're gonna put a compost bin. Right out here. Now over the compost bin, they're gonna put heavy duty. I don't know if you can see how heavy duty this plastic is on the side. But it's There's this plastic duty. on the side and it's, there, yeah. it's about a thousand trash bags. <laughs> now what the AP science class is gonna do is design a cover over the compost bin to capture the heat coming off of a compost bin. I know that. Off of a compost bin that's actively working the way it's supposed to, you're going to get almost 150 degrees of heat. Okay? That's amazing. So, so they'll take that 100... Can you believe that? That is awesome. So they'll take that 150 degrees of heat, I'm just assuming because I'm not in AP science, but they'll have another tank over here that's got copper coils in there where the 150 degrees is coming in to heat that water, and that heated water will go into the fish tank to keep the fish tank at a constant degree so the fish can live all winter long. They've done that over at one of the other local high schools, and it's been working out very well. Granville did that? Gran Granville's mm -hmm. got that going on. We're going to be using Shane from Licking Valley, which is the local high school right around here. So mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, like I say, it's not a toy, but it's a very good educational system. The serves and go outside to do something junior high right over here. Okay. Which they love yes. I don't know if we've caught this before on our videos and tours here, but as you can see, we are behind uh, the middle school. This is Heritage Middle School. And ideally, we like to have them coming over. They have a... Um, um, engineering class, pre-engineering class that comes over often when school is in. So they are going to really love this. Dan's gonna... I'm just forcing it because once that bottle gets full, it'll plunge down and go back down into the fish tank and come right back up. You gotta love the design on this though. It's very okay, thought now, out. Okay, now Kim wanted to know... I wanna know these. Mm -hmm. Number one, they're super cute because at the bottom, there's a little fish. Look, a little fish at the bottom. So, Dan, what do we do with these? Okay, when you plant tomatoes or anything that likes the vine in here, you attach a little fish to the tomato plant. And it will cause, that one's not big enough yet. It'll cause the plant to come up vertically along okay. these. So, these are yes, trellises, basically. 
Okay, so you put that right there by that. And you can move them. And then the plant will grow up in the top. The plant will grow up. Oh, they're so cute. Yes. And then some of the some of the systems, we just got this for pretty much decoration now. Some of the systems, this would be down lower where they can start another grow bed up on top. Okay, which is so you'd have two grow beds oh. on the system. The plants go up. And they not only bind on these, but they end up binding on top of the structure. If you can show that up top, Sarah. Yeah. If you can show them how we got the loop growing up. Okay. And, and for example, let's look at a plant that climbs. You see how this is climbing along? And especially how these are climbing along and going over the top. So that is the method that this is going to follow. What do you think? Cool, huh? Yeah. What do you think, Alan? Have you ever seen one of those before? No, Me either until yesterday. What do you think, TK? He's smiling. That must mean he likes it. Yeah, there's constantly water under the rocks. Sarah, what was your question? My question was with this the tip here feeding the water into the rocks like how does this move and how often do you have to move it yes well the, the grow tank's slanted just a little bit back this way okay? okay so it's all feeding down here we got about so about a quarter inch before it evacuates again that means it's going to be all the way up to almost right at rock level right here all the way across so it's going to keep those roots supplied with nutrients and water okay you got to move this about once a day just to see how the rocks are starting to dry out here a little bit. Yeah. If you go down below, see how it's wet? Yes. Okay. So, like, the surface isn't necessarily wet. No. But it is moisting underneath, underneath. that. Underneath. It's wicking underneath. Getting the roots. The roots keep pulling down. Okay. Roots will keep going forward water. And we got about an eighth of an inch, and it should evacuate again here pretty quick. So when you first set it up, do you need to feed the fish because the cycle hasn't gotten going yet? No, you don't feed the fish for about a week. Really? Because you don't I want to introduce did. another bacteria in there until okay. the system gets... It's just like an aquarium at home. You put right. fish in there, you don't feed them for a couple of days. Oh okay. man, moving is hard for fish. Well, <laughs> This then, is just a big aquarium system. So do you end up feeding them eventually? Yeah. Okay. I thought we'd been feeding them. No. Not yet. Mike did. Okay. Mike, Mike did yesterday because, like I said, we put it up Saturday. I was okay. off Monday and Tuesday. What does Mike? Yeah. Yes. Now, like, why do we? The goldfish will come out and we'll put yes. a different kind of fish in there. Because goldfish aren't ideal because goldfish produce a lot of ammonia. In the those food. are dirty fish. So this, you, you kind of need to start with goldfish. Is that? Yeah, just to get the system balanced and okay. then introduce what kind of fish you want. Okay. A bigger goldfish is called a koi. Mm -hmm. They're about that big. A lot of people use those. Yeah. In warm weather climates, they use something called tilapia, which you probably know what tilapia is from the mm -hmm. grocery store. Mm -hmm. And then in colder weather climates this winter, we'll switch over. Everybody probably knows what a bluegill is. Mm -hmm. And those are pretty hot even knows. in colder weather. So and you just sort of got to play by the season. And do they have... um? Do they have a good life in there? I mean, they're serving a great purpose. I will give them that. So I think that's awesome. But will they live a while in there? Do you have to replace the fish or anything? Well, do you know? The fish should double in number every 30 to 60 days. Okay. Now, we also introduce worms into here. And people go, how can worms live in something that doesn't need dirt? Yeah. Worms, ah, there it goes. It's back it? again. Neat. Worms don't need dirt to live. Worms need oxygen to live. What do they oh, do did everybody hear that? Worms they, do not need dirt to live. They need oxygen. They clean off the live. roots underneath there, which got the nutrients on it that the worms need. Really? They eat so, their nutrients off the roots? It's a whole ecosystem that wow. keeps going on. So they're going to poop things out like the castings that we make. Castings? And the castings will help fertilize the plants. Yeah. So, like I said, it's just one big is this cycle based? of life, like the, uh, what's that movie? The bee movie? Oh. No, with the lion, lion king. 
Oh yeah, the Lion King. King. Yeah, the Lion King. I do have a question. Um, sometimes my questions. You can drop it off right up front, or behind. We have um someone dropping off compost, which we love. Um, the question is, is this based off of something that naturally already happens? I know you said the ecosystem thing is in the war, you know, all of that. But I'm saying, where do you think this idea sparked? Is this idea man-made or is this idea um, influenced off of the natural? You know, I can't actually answer that. However, if you think out in nature where you got a waterfall coming down, bringing the nutrients out of the mountains, mm -hmm. going down into a lake where fish are, and the, I don't know how the stuff Yeah. Up. You know how lush it is down in that lower basin? Yeah. you got all those plants growing. Right. Some of these some of these grow beds you can make them as big as you want and they actually grow lemon trees lemon trees that sarah's got see sarah there's a lemon a, just had a lemon drop mm -hmm. off yesterday we leave uh the, the yellow painted rock in here just so you know to confuse people but just so you know this is our lemon trees i know you saw them a couple months ago don't forget the left is pam's the right is mine we're having a lemon tree race and over in over in uh, Africa and Asian countries, they grow something in these grow beds called Kang Kun, K A N G K U N G, which is a water lettuce. Wow, we should look that one up. It grows very quick and it's very nutritious. Kang Kun. So villagers or anybody that comes around can have just like our purpose is to make sure people got fresh vegetables. Yes. They use these things to grow fresh vegetables in. You can grow anything in mm -hmm. anything. So, so I I saw Mike had put Mike had put the dogwood a piece of a dogwood tree that I was going to be planting in there, but it must not have done that well. well. I don't know. It probably wasn't well to begin with, but Mike and I helped set the system up on Saturday. I ran it on Sunday. He ran it Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We talked this morning. It's getting balanced out. The water's starting to clear okay. up. So we think we're headed in the right direction. Okay. So is there a way to check the balance of that with like a, a certain tool yeah, faster? You, yeah. Yeah, you need a a pH. You get a system that tests out first of all the pH of the water. Mm -hmm. pH seven seven is neutral. Seven is neutral. These, That's cool to oh, know. see he's got it right there. Yeah. Fresh water master test kit. So, so, like I say, you test for ammonia. Okay. And here's a little test neat. strip thing that he got. Wonder if we can try one of those. I haven't seen this yet. So, anyway, you got your nitrite, your nitrate, your ammonia, and you got your different pH levels here okay. that you want to test it out. The system, like I say, seven is neutral. You want to run it at about six point eight if possible. Mm -hmm. That's best for the plants and for the fish. Okay. You see ammonia, nitrate, trite. That's nitrate. what you want to get out. The nitrate's what you want is the good chemical. Okay. Because that's got the bacteria in there that's making everything healthy. So. Is sun important to this? Sun, no. So could you literally, I mean, is it? You could put this in, say, a basement and it would work? I'm going to try it. Okay. Following the instructions. But just so everyone knows, we do have some. Yeah, it's probably going to be a high and low it's still not balanced real good. But it's already got colors on it, so I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Why does About it? 30 seconds. Compare pH, alkalinity, and hardness to the color chart. Ah. It looks like something's orange but it doesn't tell you how it's supposed to be wow i don't know what it's supposed to do but it's just sitting there what's that it's just kind of sitting there you're supposed to compare it to those and it hasn't changed color since i put it in oh wait a minute here's something on the bottle mm -hmm. ah. that's not do you have to close put it in there first sorry a certain amount of time it just said dip it in real quick and pull it out and then it, let it sit for 30 seconds and compare it to the uh, to the alkalinity chart. At well, 60 it looks seconds. Like the top ones have pink. It's getting What's darker. Pink it's slowly starting to change, but it's more orange than this. 
Oh, this one's starting to change. I can oh, yeah. see that. And like I say, you got to bear with us because this is only day number four. Yeah, we're brand yeah, new at this. Down. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> that looks better. <laughs> oh, Sarah, good observation. All right. Sarah pays a good attention to detail. That's right. So we've got there. That looks better. So one's orange, which means it's probably very hard because it's all the way up here at brown. Mm -hmm. This one's kind of there. Okay. Does, does it matter what kind of water you introduce into this? Do you have to use distilled water or? Uh, we use city water, but if you take a look down underneath there, mm -hmm. underneath that rack over there, Sarah. Right here. We've got two buckets of city water and we fill those up. Didn't look bad. let the chlorine leach out of the water. What if you put well water in it? Well that, water's okay. It would be? Well water's normally what they use for hydroponics. Really? And they've got to constantly test what kind of minerals and vitamins or whatever's in the well water yeah. to see what they have to add to the plant. Mm -hmm. That's why hydroponics is much more difficult. There's a nice hydroponic garden out in Granville where the lady yeah. She's got a system that's probably a million dollars. I you told me about that. To test out the water every day. And a computer well. system connected to yeah. it. It's computer, all software. It's all computerized. We're just all manual and learning what's going on. So. Now, Dan, do you think since we have a little area there that we might be able to plant a seed and see what happens? We're here. Yeah, like right here in between the maybe just do an experiment. Oh well, Mike Mike got it. Going here, okay. got this here. Just so I don't want to screw up Mike and put yeah, more we'll stuff in here up. right now. But like yeah. I say, this was arugula lettuce. Yes. Sarah's favorite. It is my, you know that, yes. And it's sprouted in 40 hours. I love which, arugula. Which is unbelievable. Yeah, it's Saturday. So, so what do you do with all the goldfish when you switch them out? Hello, arugula. Give me Hello, my them favorite them lettuce. <laughs> There's really, a little, what are you gonna do with little, little tomato. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> little <laughs> tomato. But no, that, that's the flip side of this thing in countries or even the United States when you've got big fish tanks. Yeah. They'll grow tilapia and every six months they'll harvest the tilapia and take them to a fish processor to get fillets out. And then they got fish food to eat. I mean, wow. fish fillets to eat. They got vegetables to eat. Question. Yeah. I know a few weeks ago, uh, we were shown a plant mm -hmm. that pretty much had died because it was over water with the, with the, the root rot. Mm -hmm. So what's keeping these from the roots not rotting when they're constantly in water? They're not constantly in water. Because every, Good question. Every 15 to 20 minutes, uh -huh. the water evacuates. Okay. I mean, it evacuates all the water that's out of here. So they're not. The tank. Yeah, they're not drowning in the water. No, they're they're just, always just kind of they're always getting new nutrients okay. the water goes out i Good can't question. say they, they dry off but they're not sitting in water ah. and it just keeps going and that's why you said the bed was pulled a little bit so it yeah tilted it back so it goes here um does anyone else have any questions right now doesn't the soil make some of the roots rot too all the, all yes. the microorganisms in the yes. soil when it's super wet it just oh, helps, it, it helps okay. facilitate the rotting oh so, and what a roots just like anything else if you get a clump of dirt up there that's real hard against it, what's the root not getting? It's not getting oxygen. The root needs oxygen just like we need oxygen. Delayed. So, yeah. And that's why you put the worms in there too. If there's any excess dirt on the roots, the worms eat it, eat it all, I guess. Is there, is there any plants that um, people are really about with aquaponics like like that is like the go-to with aquaponic growing or is it just the general yeah, you can grow anything i think it's really what you want in your area for one okay and what your people are willing to a lot of le lettuce is really easy to grow yeah lettuce is really that. good in vitamins and nutrients and yeah you know what i mean yeah and this just these get supercharged sort of like the microgenes get supercharged okay no. So what about like say you you wouldn't want to grow like a pumpkin seed in here? No, I don't think so. I don't because think that's kind of like not necessary. That's like overkill. You want stuff that grows fast, that grows healthy, nutritious. Yes. And you get the stuff out to people that need good. Yes. Eating and that's what together we grow is all about, and that's why we're at this new venture. So 
we're learning with everybody, but it's pretty cool. And it sounds like we're going to have more and more. Sometimes I miss the memo. I mean, I know I've heard we're going to have more. Um, later. And, uh, it all depends what kind of grant money comes through. Yes, yeah, sure. that's the thing. It does depend, but I think this is a, a winner. <laughs> but this is a highly educational system, especially oh, yeah. for like kids at the junior high that are still trying to figure uh, out yeah. where they want to go to in life as far as. There's a pre engineering class, it's a pre engineering yes. that comes over, and um, yeah, they uh, right. maybe we'll have to. Yeah. Oh, that, let me see it. Sarah found a bug. We're going to, if I had my app, I can identify that. Is this but bug or a bad bug? It looks like an ant. I don't know. We have a good bug, bad bug. <laughs> Big legs and wings. Mm -hmm. it's, like a, like a little it's a weird bug. Throw it away. No. Kind of keep it away. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's bugs. No, no potatoes in Does here. Does anyone know the cry. time so I can oh, keep yeah. track of where we're at? Potato master. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys, let's um. Unless anyone else. Is, yes. Does anyone? Are we able to um unmute anybody that might have a question? Because we love questions. And Sarah does have a question. Do you have to keep a certain kind of rock in here? Like, does it have to be like yeah, a that's a good one. Rock or rock that has like mm -hmm. that cold water or anything or round and delicate yeah. round yeah they go everywhere from lava rock shale rock anything that's relatively clean after the dirt washes out of it okay and then like lava rock is like a rock that like absorbs into the yeah stuff. yeah so i didn't know if you had to use a kind of like this is yeah. what they suggest Good question. I start off with on the first set. Okay. Because it's the easiest to be able to control when you first start. Okay. So like limestone in it or something. Or yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you couldn't use we couldn't use anything like this, right? Because it's a little bit too like heavy maybe. Well there's stuff, yeah, there's some of that in there. Okay. Would it ever get moldy or mossy or anything? Yeah. I couldn't tell you, but I, I'm I'm not sure. Okay. But I think once the worms get introduced into there, they'll take care of that part of the problem. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. So. so we have a whole life cycle that is growing in your hands. Yeah. The yeah. Worms, to the to the fish. Wow. Isn't it amazing? It is. I love that. This is absolutely cool. amazing. And Dan, you explained that really well. Thank you. Yeah, it brings thanks, science Dan. to life, especially for these kids. Like, you yeah. can only get yes. things out of a workbook. I know. But you can't know it. I'll teach yes. you now, tell you, it doesn't mean you get to sit in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's better to go out and see this stuff oh, yeah. and get them excited. And here then they are sitting. And study about this stuff. Yes. Yeah. If it sparks your interest. Yeah. You can see the little fish. And I personally love the water element noise. When working, I probably will want to work here. Maybe even come over here and do some like office type work in here just to hear that noise. We're gonna start taking lunch like, cheat yeah. on the sunflower. <laughs> yes, I know. I can't cheat on the sunflower for it, but until it cools down, it might. Yeah. It gets yeah, hot that's in there. The problem we're gonna have for the rest of the summer. We still don't have the electricity hooked up. We are getting it. Yeah, there's these big so fans. You see them at the end. There's two of them. And we have had someone come out just for all the here we grew up participants. Um, we do uh, have an idea that we are going to have electric in here, so it'll be heated. Is that right, Dan? Should have semi semi heated to where, you know, this is a good social distancing um, environment, and we will definitely be able to come in here um, over the winter time, right, and work and and yes. do some things. And if you noticed, you guys weren't in here last time. But this section Yay. here, this section here, a month ago was all tomatoes that were about this yep. small. Mm -hmm. and once the tomatoes quit producing, we pull those out and we put another crop of green beans in here. Yeah. If you come down here, yes, you may. Now, this looks so different from like March when we started. And I know you guys had the tour in March. Yeah. Now, if you remember. Yeah. Kim got a giant zucchini. If you remember when we were over to 6th Street last week, the zucchini and yellow squash were all dead. Mm -hmm. But if you go through here, Kim just got a zucchini. If you come down here, you see I still got yellow squash growing and it's still putting out new stems. 
the, mm -hmm. the white stuff's called powdery mildew mm -hmm. and that's a spore that's down in the soil it really doesn't hurt the plant it just makes it look ugly i was wondering about that yeah why don't we have that in the garden beds outside normally you do oh. i think in here you water in here you shut it down at night mm -hmm. you, you mm -hmm. got more moisture build up here for those spores to keep uh gotcha. germinating but if you come over here <laughs> look straight down there you can see another yellow this we only planted this one time and the plants just keep going which I've never seen it like this. Normally they produce once or twice and then they get that worm borer in there and they die back. So you think this is the best growing environment so far that we have, like out of being? We can control it a little bit yeah. better because we can keep the water moisture level it's beautiful where it needs here. to be. If you take a look at the, that's three loop of plants over there. One, yeah. two, three. You guys and know what loop up, is. And if you can take a look, you might, Kim, you want to show them the looper? Look at that looper right there. Alan, do you remember what lupa is? What do we make with it at the end sure. of the year? Yes! Way to go, buddy. Ooh. So look at that. I'm going to walk over there. we got a couple minutes. We'll take a little walk. Yes? Okay. Okay, so everybody, if you heard that, um, if you do end up with one of these spotted leaves like this. You should cut them off because every time you water, it's making more and more and more Okay, spores. all right. So you can cut all those off and then it won't spread quite as fast. See how it's guys. spreading over. And then what you do, once you pull them all out, you gotta get something called copper sulfate. Copper sulfate. And work it into the soil. That kills the spores that are down in the soil. Gotcha. Because copper sulfate's a natural it's a natural it's thing, yeah. Found in nature, so. Just like when we use neem oil for everything in gardening, or we think that's the solution to every bug. Mm -hmm. yeah. TK well, likes I, that. I here about three o'clock tonight and pick all the vegetables that we got. And we got a youth pick over at one of the gardens tonight. And I'll take those over there and people will enjoy the vegetables. Oh, no. Put it underneath the soil. <laughs> Oh, look at them all. Those are supposed to You yeah. guys, I came over here to show you, and I forgot. You don't have to de-seed it. And this is the kind you want to de-seed and fry it up like we did on the barbecue. Okay. But this will be super tender. And you guys, um, here is giant lupa. Giant lupa. That's about 30 soaps, maybe. Just saying. Look, we have some pollinators in here. Now, the other thing we're doing, Sarah. It's coming. Let's come over here. some more tomato plants. People go, are you crazy? <laughs> this time of year? Well, once the zucchini and the yellow squash come out, put tomatoes down there hopefully by September 1st mm -hmm. and I want to see if we can get tomatoes by the end of October because normally the first spot the first frost in this part of the country is October 9th mm -hmm. but with the high tunnel being protected we should be able to produce tomatoes all the way through November so we'll we'll be walking along that journey with you guys so you'll be able to see we'll say remember we now, thought we were crazy now if you notice these loofa are starting to turn. Yes, what's up with that? See how they're not dark green? Guys, these, look at these loofa. They're starting to turn. These two plants, this is only two plants, and they went down there and they went down there and they went up. These are going to be ready to pick if you feel it. You can feel the exoskeleton inside that we yeah. have the soap out of. We just got to wait for that skin to dry a little bit so we can peel that skin off and then slice up that sponge inside <laughs> so Sarah can have her skin nice and mm -hmm. smooth. Exfoliating. Yes. After we add some doTERRA essential oil, it's uh, some fancy, nice soap. Right, everyone? Now we go out to the uh, Powell's Garden or the Veterans Garden out here. I think we might be running. 11.38. Okay. Any questions before we leave the high tunnel? Any questions on Pals TV before we leave the high tunnel? Or participants here? No. Damn. Nope. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're back. Hello. Any questions? Dusty, you're unmuted.
Dusty, you're um, how, do, how do plants and rocks and lettuce grow? How do plants and rocks and lettuce grow? Yeah. You mean in the aquaponics? In the office, yeah. I mean, I'm talking about in the in the yard. I meant. Um. Well, what all? Do, okay, you guys. What? Let's answer it this way. What all does a plant need to grow? Fertilizer. Fertilizer. Needs potassium, nitrogen, phosphates, and something else. Okay. So these are. These are the beds that normally the participants take care of. Mm -hmm. But since we haven't, since it's COVID-19, we just put a lot of stuff in here and we've been pulling out and replanting. As you can see, I got more cucumbers mm -hmm. that'll be Probably. ready to go. Yeah. We planted those two weeks ago. I'm gonna do a, already that big. I'm gonna do a quick sweep because we got about a minute. We planted but, more green beans. Green beans. Take a look down there by where Sarah's mm -hmm. at. We started an asparagus patch. You guys, this is an asparagus patch. To come up. It's going to take a, a so while. Two years for an asparagus patch. I missed two years. Sarah, you want to hold up like one minute? Okay. Um, anybody know what this is here? It smells good. It's an herb. Herb. And it starts with an R. Rosemary. Are you sure? Yeah. You sure that's not it's lavender? Not, that's oh, it's lavender. lavender. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because its needles are a little flatter. Mm -hmm. It's lavender. It had its flower on it. That's what you put under it. your pillow at night to make you sleep better. I, didn't, I don't think I've ever seen lavender that, like, I cool. My, I, thought it, I thought it was very too. Dry, don't you? Yeah, yeah, but I, I guess the needles are, I think, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> the needles are a little flatter than... They're and okay. rosemary, it's well, like a the little red needle. Things, yeah. I, I was afraid about the too, so I'm all about the okay, needle. They don't the anyway. So you can so put it in your teeth. I was going to try and catch some caterpillars to take to a woman who raises them. And we have a beautiful patch of milkweed and no caterpillars on it. So I wasn't able to catch any. No. So we're not sure what's up with that. We don't know what's growing on, but it's, we'll figure it out. The healthiest patch we've had so far, there's not yeah. that many aphids on it, but there's no monarchs. Beets. Hey. These are yellow beets. These are red beets. Okay. Let me see if I can find them. They're on the small side this year. Beets. I pick these and take them to the, the uh, you pick. And the ladies love to take the stems off. Mm -hmm. They clean them, they peel them, they boil them down, and they make pickled beets out of these. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what pickled beets are. You take like a cup of sugar, a cup of vinegar, mm -hmm. put them in there, slice them all up. And then when they boil up, you yeah. take some hard boiled eggs and put it in there and they turn those. purple. And they're delicious and mm -hmm. nutritious. Dan, give me those tops because you can eat those or you can juice them. And I'll juice them. Juice them. Yes. Uh, Beet greens just... are like any other green. You got to wash them good because they get sand like anything else. But there are so many vitamins in there. They're very, very healthy. And a lot of people use them like in uh, shakes and stuff mm -hmm. to put in there Can't. for protein shake or vitamin shake or what whatever. If, is that the same with the radishes? Gosh, I don't know about radish tops. There's a pickery. I don't know. Oh, I don't okay. know if you want to use radish tops or not. Or beet tops. Sometimes radish tops, I think, get a little bitter too. And we yes. sell a microgreen that's radish. Yes. Ooh, yes. So that's that's very, very small. Yes, and beets. Very fun. So. Yes. And you know, you can tie dye things in beet juice, which oh, I think yes. is something we might be able to do. What? You can. I love tie dyeing. Yes. Kim's the old hippie from out there. Yes, he is. Does all that stuff. California. <laughs> Oh, can you tell us about the U pick? Some yes, you guys. Our U pick is three times a week until mid October, and there's three locations. Um, the first one is on South Sixth Street. It's Monday evenings, and it's five thirty to seven. And then that's okay. And then we have um, another one 
that is tonight. Uh, tonight, and it is on East End. It is going to be Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Garden, 5.30 to 7.00, and Saturday morning at Everett Park, um, 10 to 11.30, and it's free, and you can come in with your family. Donations are accepted but not required, and you can pick all the fresh uh, veggies that you need for your family. Have we done a broadcast from Everett Park yet? We have. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the premier garden yeah. right now. It's there you cool. go, Laura. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We hope to see you. Oh. <laughs> It'd be good to see you at our U pick. You'd love it. Now you can go over there. Sarah's is high. Oh, they done? Oh, uh, let's go pull a couple carrots, you guys. We have some carrots. We had like okay this is the difference between thinning and unthinning i know at everett park we pulled some up that were just kind of planted very densely i guess oh, is I the word. Some. and then we have some carrots we can pull up here because we're actually going to plant some more now, this whole thing was anyway. filled with carrots two <laughs> weeks ago. look at that cute little thing yeah yes. look <laughs> you guys look how cute this was all planted in carrots two weeks wanna, ago wanna let's see. and then on friday night Alan. we had a function out here yeah. The kids were having a scavenger hunt mm -hmm. on who could pull the biggest carrot out. Yeah. So we, to hold that out. Yeah. I, that was awesome. It was teenagers that were just uh, out here, just yeah. super interested in. Oh, yeah. You pull them all out. The see garden. When you can see the top, and it looks, you can see it's kind of big. So you'd want to pull that one. And you just kind there of you gently go. pull it. There you go. There's your carrot. Oh. Wow. Wow. That's a good one. So if you can't and see you guys, the top like this that. is a good one too. Yeah. And you just rinse it, and my daughter will just eat it. Rinse it, eat it right off. Yeah. She Thanks. loves them. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, it's too bad we didn't have the rest of them in here because we had yes. rainbow carrots were Somewhere. purple, orange, awesome. white. Yeah, no, I shouldn't have done that. Go That's back in there, carrots. <laughs> yeah, I thought you wanted to plant something in TK, there. do you want to pull out a carrot? No. I'd just like to see him smiling. <laughs> what about you, Alan? Hey, Kim. Yeah. No? Well, okay. Know. It's not potatoes. You don't want anything to do with it, huh? Yeah. Alan, did you um, have your potatoes that you got at uh, 6th Street? Did you have those for dinner the other night? Okay. Your potatoes. Where Did you have them for dinner the other night? And we had fish and French fries the other night. You, night. you made French fries no, with them? We, we oh. went out and bought them. Okay, we, gotcha. We went out and ordered. Yeah. You know, okay. Instead of going to the restaurant, and ordered food in the restaurant. Okay. We did okay. take out. So. Nice. Hold up. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. Oh, TK's got to carry you guys. Go, TK. <laughs> See, it's impossible not to right. feel great. I, and I will take the oh, that made my day. You get dirt, dirt in your fingernails. It's the best thing in life. Take the tops and I'll juice them too. That was fun, huh? Oh, oh, that is so sweet. I, I make a big juicy. I think TK likes coming to the garden. The baby carrot. I do too. Sarah, yeah. when do you when do you guys uh, open up that uh, that tunnel? So right now it looks like that's that's kind of a that's greenhouse that you guys keep. Uh, throughout the winter, what, yeah. what mark do you generally keep that open? Oh, you mean, you mean the greenhouse, like, uh, the smaller structure here? The, well, the one, saying? the one we were in with the aquaponics seemed like it was, uh, just like the frame that you cup, do you cover that up with, uh, yes. like plastic Plast for the winter? Double yeah. Plastic. Double layered plastic and the air gets blown through the two layers to keep it insulated. Air blows through the two layers to keep it insulated. Um it's very thick double layered plastic and we can roll up the sides. So in the morning Dan will come over and roll the sides of it up. So it doesn't get too hot. So it doesn't get too hot. Um so but besides that we I don't know if we're going to be putting any like plastic over it on top of that cuz it's already pretty much well, what we did last year, we grew lettuce in there. Mm -hmm. And when I knew it was going to go below 30 degrees, I would take a real thin landscape fabric yeah. and put over the lettuce. Mm -hmm. okay. Lettuce is one of those things. It'll keep growing. If it freezes, you don't touch it. You just let it thaw back out. And once it gets hot enough, it, it starts growing. Again. Yeah. It'll hibernate, grow, hibernate, grow. And Kim will attest, we had a beautiful lettuce. Growing. I can we attest, too. Wow. Yeah, it was We're amazing. Trying to give away as much lettuce. As I think could. we took some to Dine and Dash. Um, yeah, we did Dine and Dash um, and some to the pantry. You're welcome. What do you, how, What do you think? Oh, I see. So. 
you. Yeah. Very you. cool. Well, thank you for sharing all of that stuff. I mean, that was You're welcome. Uh, that was the information overload. You're getting all sorts of thumbs up. Uh, yes. I learned. Uh, uh, looks like Nick. Did you have a question? Oh uh, no, no, no. Just, uh, just hi, Nick Marto. Hey. Hi, Nick. We miss you. I miss you. Hi. So that's all we have for our uh, 11 o'clock segment. Thank you again to uh, Sarah and all of our friends uh, at Together We Grow. And, and uh, um, that was just really cool learning um, about the aquaponics. So thank you, Dan. All that stuff is, is just really interesting. So uh, we'll be back at the top of the hour. Until then, I'll take you guys off mute. Feel free to socialize. We'll be back soon. So have have a great day, guys, and uh, everyone else, stick with us. We'll be right back. Bye. Bye. Bye.